Dr. Lee Mangyan. So she escaped to the United States to tell her story. She joins me live now for her first TV interview in this exclusive chat today. And welcome, Doctor, here. This is her first interview. So the first interview is probably the most important interview. Because unless the person all of a sudden changes personality or motive, it defines everything else. If they are being deceptive about a particular subject, that deception will either grow, tweak, improve, manifest even better in future interviews. If that person is being very truthful, honest, her story will develop, more details will come out, and the honesty will just be even bigger. More understanding will come from it. So the first interview usually is your best bet for finding out if this is a good person or not. I realize that as Bill Hemmer introduces her, he has gone tight-lipped. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, you Thank arrived, you for having me here. You arrived in the U.S. at the end of April. You say you're now in hiding. You believe the Chinese communist government has lied. About what? Yeah, doctor? exactly. Exactly. They are lying. And I have to hide because I know how they treat the whistleblower. And as a whistleblower here, I want to tell the truth of COVID-19 and origins of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 to people, to the world. So I have to keep safety. Okay, doctor, what did the Chinese lie about that you can prove? Okay, first, as I mentioned in the video, in I'm going to go back and look at that. To the world. So I have to keep safety. Okay, doctor, what did the Chinese lie about that you can prove? Okay, first, as I mentioned in the I was looking at that. Her eye movement is extremely fast. So we've got one of those people that's brain is working much faster than most of us. And what I mean by that is she's thinking faster. She's accessing memories faster. She's accessing her thoughts faster. Everything's much faster. The only trip up would be, you know, because your brain is moving that fast, is you might stumble over words as you skip through them to get out what's in your mind out of your mouth. Anyways, the part of the brain that she accessed there is her constructive part because Bill has asked her about what exactly did they lie about and she constructs it. But her body is not going stiff. She's not being deceptive in that part, which tells me she does not have firsthand knowledge. And firsthand knowledge is always important when talking about witnesses. Video in Fox. Uh, our government already knows that before the end of December, there are over 40 people get infected, but not, as they mentioned, like 27. And also, most importantly, there were human-to-human -human transmission already at that time. But they keep lying until middle of June, actually 20. That is so freaking fast. She just did it again. This time, she's accessing actual memory. It's so quick. I'm actually really impressed with her that she's not tripping over her words and she's speaking a different language. Okay, so y y your claim is that at the end of December, there is human to human transition. And the Chinese exactly. government and the World Health Organization did not cop to that until about three weeks later. If you're yes. right, how would things be different around the world and here in the U.S. now? Okay, let me explain to you. First, this is a huge pandemic we have seen in the world. It's more than everything we know in human history. So for that, the timing is very, very important. So if we can stop it early, we can save a lot of life. That's the key point. Okay, so you, you have said then, I, you invited your husband to come with you. He did not. Uh, you have spoken with the FBI. Who is investigating your story, doctor? Uh, FBI have done it, and also many other people from U.S. government, they have done, uh, done it, contacted me. They need to verify my story. Okay, can you prove it, doctor? Uh, for example, I have the receipt that FBI agent leave for me that they have hold my phone, cell mm -hmm. phone from uh, Los Angeles airport and then return it back to me several days later in New York. Yeah, sorry, just to be clear, not can you prove whether or not you talk to the FBI. Can you prove your claim that, I can that show Beijing you is lying? Okay, so now we have something that says evasive. So can you prove it? Now, when he asked the first time, it would appear that she misunderstood. Can you prove that, you know, the go American government has been interviewing you and trying to 
prove your story. And you see her actually go to memory. Yes. Yes, I can do that. I can prove that. I have memory of that. Now we sit there and he clarifies the question and asks her, no, no, no. Can you prove that they've lied, that the Chinese government has lied? Can you prove your story? And we have no memory. We have more construction. Now, when I say deception for her, I don't mean it in a way of someone blatantly lying. Not like, you know, crazy Nancy. It's like trying to sell someone silver and convincing them that it's gold. Silver's worth a lot. Not as much as gold, but it's still worth something. And it looks like in this instance, especially for the timing of this interview, it's at this point common knowledge. This was back in June that they knew about cases back in 2019. It just didn't get to the boss's desk, apparently, until later. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of evidence, like how I communicate with the people in China CDC, and also because of my network, I have a lot of friends they working in the first line in the dirty zone of China during COVID-19. I have talking uh, this kind of chat record uh, to them, and also uh, I can show it to you later. Okay, so you, you believe your life is in... So her body sings with this. That's what I mean. She's not being deceptive like her. She's just kind of portraying a piece of gold that really isn't gold. It's silver, still worth a lot of money, but not gold. Jeopardy and you will not go back to Hong Kong. How come? Of course, because I know how they treat whistleblowers. For the case, that's how our government has done to keep people silent if they want to reveal the truth, not only about COVID-19, but also for the other things happened in China. For example, during SARS time, the senior doctor, Professor Jiang Yanyong, had revealed it in Beijing, and then he got punished. And also... As she started this, she went to construction before she told the story, and then she references it again, construction, as she comes to it. I would have to say that the news report around this is feeding it to the audience as something more than it is. And she's not a stupid woman, as we have seen. But she's not a deceptive person, an out-and-out liar. She knows she has silver. She realized they're trying to peddle it as gold. This time, uh, Professor Zhang Yongzhen in Shanghai, his team revealed the sequence of the SARS-CoV-2 at the first time in the world and published it on Nature on 3rd February this year. And then his P3 lab was shut down by the government. And as she goes through that story and tells you, she's telling you a secondhand story. This isn't something that she has personally experienced or watched. This is like me telling you about mares that have been chased out of their towns. I didn't experience that. It really did happen. But I've got no actual memory on it. No. Uh, the Chinese embassy here in the U.S. says they don't know who you are. And, and to quote them, they say, we've never heard of this person referring to you. What do you say to that, doctor? Of course they won't know me because... I Quick movement again with that brain search. She's a fast thinker, but she's not stiff. Her body is singing with her and she's giving you her truth. I'm not the top virologist as they know who worked directly as a consultant for WHO. And as you hear her, she clarifies, I am not the top. So whatever she knew, as far as the questions to this embassy or not, she knew apparently that it asked, you know, who the top virologist is. Can you verify she's the top virologist or the virologist, period? And they didn't. So she covers, of course, they don't know me. I'm not the top one. But there's something fishy with the story. I find when you find situations like this, when you have someone who seems genuine as far as the rest of their body language, but they have no memory, and then they get caught kind of like this one, and then she spins it, well, I'm not the top one, that's why they don't know me. To me, it says, oh, okay, you seem like a very intelligent person. And in other interviews, if you watch her, she definitely understands viruses, at least to the extent an educated and self-taught individual could understand each other. But I am the one who work with them directly, and I am the core team member in that, uh, in that lab who communicate uh, Kate with China's first-line doctors to this WHO lab. Okay, la last question here. And I, I asked you who's investigating your story. Maybe I can reframe the question. What yeah. is the U.S. government now able to do with your information, doctor, if you're right? Uh, I, I'm waiting to tell all the things I know. 
provide all the evidence to U.S. government. And so this is where we sit there and go, ah, we've gotten suspicious before thinking, ah, silver, that's gold plated. And now we see this. So what exactly can the U.S. government do with your information? Then we have actually an emotional response and we go down. And remember, she's quick and she comes right back up. So we have a hiding moment with emotion and we come up. What can the U.S. government do? And she begins it by an evasive answer. And I want them to understand. I also want U.S. people to understand how terrible this is. It's not what you have thought. It's not what you have read through the media or listen from our China government, even WHO. This is something really different. And we have to chase the true uh, trace the true evidence and get the real answer because this is a key point to solve this pandemic. Mm. If not, we really don't have much time. Oh. Now, as emotional and somewhat factual that answer is, it's I would expect more from her as a virologist. I call this an evasive answer because she's asked out and out, how's the government going to use this? And she goes into the rhetoric of it's not what you think it is, basically, without actually giving any information. It's worse than you know. These are emotional trigger words. And as a population, we've all become suspicious of emotional trigger words. She's not talking about six feet separation. She's not talking about masks. She's not talking about vaccines. She's not talking about possible treatments. She's not talking about how to stop the spread. She's using emotional trigger words. And that's what you get. That's an evasive answer from a virologist who should know. One more video I want to watch of her. Just to be clear, you're saying yeah. we, we've all been told, we've all heard about these, these um, wet markets and the seafood mm. market the, and the reclaims, certainly from the beginning, that this is where it started. You genuinely, in your scientific beliefs, you don't believe that's where it came from at all. No, I have my intelligence from the CDCs in China, from the local doctors, from doctors and other people around China. So also based on my evidence, I work on vaccine and also virology, immunology in the University of Hong Kong. All these things get together clearly shown and now get verified. So, these are the so that was a really long answer that she gave, <laughs> but it was very good. So we got done with Bill who had that silver and gold moment, to her to literally tell you, where does she get all her intelligence from? All her evidence. It's all secondhand from other people and her work on a vaccine. Not work on the virus itself, not collecting it and manipulating it, but other people and her work on a vaccine. That's called secondhand knowledge and they have nothing to give you. It's as good as someone else eating a cookie and then telling you, you should feel full. Secondhand knowledge gives you nothing, no matter how much the individual telling you believes it. Episode one of Surviving Jail has been released, and this is a show where ordinary people are put into jail. Amandi covers certain aspects of their interactions and body language that contribute to them having an okay time in jail versus a really hard time. Well, it seems like a good thing. Tough guy. Gotta handle them rough sometimes. Yeah, that's what's up. If you'd like to learn more about analysing body language, there is a video course available on Mandy's website for Gold subscribers, where Mandy teaches more about her techniques of deception detection. There's also other content such as the crime series and interesting mind series available to both Gold and Silver subscribers. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Library to watch even more free videos. If you like it, please share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.